what he just said. Madness is here. It's upon us. Whatever it's on. And Northwestern has won. They have knocked out the defending national champions. Giosa. Here we go, the first bracket preview. Four weeks from today, 68 teams will begin their journey on the road to the Final Four, and this is what they will all be playing for, to be the last team standing in San Antonio with this year's national championship trophy raised high in the air. Hello everyone, I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to the NCAA March Madness Bracket Preview. This marks the second year that the selection committee will reveal the tournament's top 16 seeds as they stand right now. I'm joined by the best bracket reveal team in the studio, no, in the business, Mark <laughs> Kellogg and Seth Davis. And it's also our pleasure to welcome Bruce Rasmussen, the chair of the Division I Men's Basketball Committee and Athletics Director at Creighton University. Ras, good to be here. Good to have you here. It's great to be here, and I'd like to commend my fellow committee members for their passion and the amazing commitment they made to the process. Yes, there were 140 right. games, 140 games played yesterday, and we were on a teleconference last night till well after midnight. Well, last year in the inaugural bracket preview, the selection committee was nearly perfect, picking 15 of the 16 seeds in the 2017 bracket. What changes have you guys made in the seeding and bracketing process? Uh, the one major change is we do a better job of recognizing wins away from home. Okay, so the four regional sites for this year are going to be Boston, Massachusetts in the east, Atlanta, Georgia in the south, Omaha, Nebraska will host the Midwest Regional, and then rounding it out in the west will be Los Angeles, California. Depending on how the committee bracketed the first 16 seeds, this map may come into play a great deal over the next 30 minutes. So let's get to it and start with your projected overall number one seed, Bruce. The number one overall seed is Virginia. Of Virginia's course. Virginia's had an unbelievable year. They're 13 and two in quadrant one and two wins, and they're 10 and one, an amazing 10 and one on the road. Virginia will go to Atlanta. You look at Virginia, and I'm, I'm confident we're gonna see Villanova and a couple of other teams obviously on that one seed. I'm wondering what appealed most to the committee in giving Virginia the number one seed spot overall. Well, Virginia's a dominant defensive team, but they're much better offensively than they... Let's move on now to the rest of the number one seeds, Bruce. Uh, the next is Villanova, and they will be in Boston. Okay. And Xavier will oh, be wow. in Omaha. And Xavier Purdue is the number three. Out west to Los Angeles. Okay, now here comes that map again. Why is Purdue, which is close wow, to wow, 574 wow. miles, that site is taken, right? That site is taken, and so as they are seated, they get priority in terms of where they go. Number one seeds, no surprise here, really, for me. I'm surprised I put Xavier ahead of Purdue. State could find a way but those are the number one we'll seeds. Look at that. Kansas has lost a lot of games recently. We're all number two, Russ. The top number two seed is Auburn, and wow, Auburn did okay. not go uh, to Atlanta uh, because. Uh, we cannot have the top number one seed play the top number two seed. Okay. So Auburn goes to Omaha. Kansas will go to Los Angeles. Kansas is the number Duke 16? will be in Boston. And Duke? Cincinnati will be in Atlanta. Wow, and okay. We, that wasn't the way we had them originally, but you'll see later we did that to balance the bracket. How's the two line look for you? Um, wow. I had those teams in my group. Seth is the bracketologist, so he can actually <laughs> dissect it a little better, but I had those teams right in that neighborhood. Well, it was interesting to me. I mentioned about Kansas and Duke. Again, people I'm might surprised say, Michigan well, State isn't on there. Losses, they just Duke beat Purdue. Five losses, mm -hmm. But it's not just what's happened the last couple of weeks. Here's out of the ACC are the projected number one overall seed. And before we move on with the seeding process, let's quickly recap the top eight seeds for you. Villanova is the second overall number one, Xavier is number three, and Purdue number four. The two seeds are Auburn, Kansas, Duke, and Cincinnati. 
and it is time now to open your envelope and uh, <laughs> reveal the number three seeds. The top number three seed is Clemson. Clemson really? cannot be in Boston or Atlanta because we already have ACC teams mm -hmm. there, so Clemson would go to Omaha. You know, it's amazing. Okay. That's why they call it the magic of television. By some <laughs> strange coincidence, we have Brad Brownell, the coach <laughs> of Clemson University, standing by in his eighth season at the helm of the Tigers. Hello so much, Clark. Thank you. Let's get Bruce back now to the number three seeds remaining. Who you got? The remaining number three seeds, Texas Tech. And Texas Tech okay. will go to Boston. Michigan State. Michigan State Okay, I like Atlanta, Michigan State there. And North Carolina will go out west to Los North Angeles. North Carolina as a okay, three so seed three come seeds, on. Clemson, Texas Tech, Michigan State, North Carolina. We continue on to the last four remaining seeds. Tell us who rounds out the top 16. Okay, uh, Tennessee. Tennessee okay, will be I like in Atlanta. That. Ohio State. Ohio State will be in I Boston. I like that too, Ohio State. Arizona will be out west in Los Angeles. I can Angeles, see Arizona, yep. And Oklahoma. Well, Ooh, I don't. Omaha. Well, it's time to defer to my partner. I really don't like He's Oklahoma there. Bracketologist, other than Jerry Palm. Well, we got the Jerry Palm. So I want to know. I want to know. How does this okay. compare to the 16? Couple you things. First of all, no offense, not feeling Oklahoma in this top 16. They've lost six of their uh, last eight games. Uh, I think that both Gonzaga and Rhode Island actually, I think, would have better mm -hmm. claims as a, as a four. Maybe even St. Mary's, despite the loss last night. Minor quibble. I would have Texas Tech as a two. Uh, and Cincinnati is a three in terms of their strength of schedule. And, of course, Texas Tech, I think, is going to have more opportunities because of the conference that they play in uh, the rest of the way. But I'm interested in Michigan State, which yeah. a lot of people call. maybe uh, think is the I best. I thought they might have been a one seed. Yeah, well, a lot of people, well, are they a one, maybe a two, to see them at the three line. But I'll point this out. Michigan State, I mentioned the Lucha Court loss to Duke. They have only two wins against teams ranked in the top 50 RPI, which is very low for this time of year. And they have zero games remaining in the regular season in the Big Ten against teams ranked in the top 50 of the RPI. So I don't know. I know you don't like to speculate, but fair to say it's kind of a, a steep climb for Michigan State to get to the one line without some help from the teams that are already there? Well, Michigan State has about 25% of their schedule remaining, and they've got an opportunity to continue to rack up wins. And in the conference tournament, yeah. they have a potential to play some outstanding teams. So Michigan State still got a lot in front of them. As we see what's on the board now, was there much argument amongst the committee as far as who goes where? The committee was pretty strong in their consensus of the number one seeds, but there was a lot of dialogue all the way through uh, the first quadrant because the teams are so close. I mean, it's paper thin. Yeah, it really is. And 